Dr. Bro Branson is assistant professor of philosophy at Brescia University. I believe I'm saying that right. Brescia University in Kentucky, and his research focuses on the philosophy of the early church fathers. Right? Following along so far? Dr. Branson frequently interacts with Dr. Tuggy's research on social Trinitarianism, what, what is labeled by the acronym ST, relative identity Trinitarianism, which is uh, indicated by the initials RI, and the approach that Dr. Branson himself favors called monarchical Trinitarianism, or MT. Don't worry if you're lost in the definitions. As I say in my notes, the definitions of these different Trinitarian theory, theories will be summarized alongside each other in the last few bullet points of the final quote from Dr. Branson below. So I'll define those terms later on okay so don't worry that your head spinning right now and going oh Ariel stop giving me two big terms I don't understand I can't appreciate all that just tell me what the Bible says about God all right don't worry we're working our way towards that but we have to build this this context of of an appreciation for why the Bible speaks the way it does at least in my uh, opinion so briefly explaining monarchical Trinitarianism first right this is Dr. Branson listen to his definition and let's see if we can appreciate some of it. Uh, Dr. Branson writes, so what's the logic here? This is Dr. Branson. Simply put, speaking of monarchical Trinitarianism and uh, this discussion of it, simply put, it's analytic that a father must have a son. So stop, stop for a moment, just listen to the words that we use. We Trinitarians talk about God the Father and God the Son, but we seldom actually stop and realize that to, to to define Jesus as the Son is to instantly presume that there must be a father, or at least a mother, right? A parent. Because how can one be a son without a parent? Likewise, when we Trinitarians describe God as a father, then we are instantly assuming or presuming or or uh, implicating that there are that there's offspring. Because how can one be a father without offspring? So what Dr. Branson is trying to alert us to the reality right up front is that by recognizing that the Bible uses verbiage for God such as Father and verbiage for Yeshua such as Son, then we instantly create and recognize the relationship between those two. And this is going to propel us into articulating the inner nature of God and the Trinity by recognizing that the eternality of God is also tied to the eternality of Yeshua as the Son and vice versa, which directly contradicts or, or, or counteracts Tuggy's claims that Jesus is not an eternal God-like being, rather that Jesus is a created being, he's a creature. He's an exalted creature, nonetheless, and he's worthy of being called God in special contexts, and he's certainly worthy of worship because God demands it. This is according to Tuggy's universe, uh, uh, um, um, Unitarian perspective. But Tuggy objects to the Trinitarian notion that Jesus is eternally divine. And But Dr. Branson is going to say, uh-uh-uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the Son. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the Father, so follow along with my logic, okay? All right, so this is what uh, Branson's going to tell us. Dr. Branson's...